Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome everyone to my channel, Electrical Engineers Academy. Sorry, uh, I've been busy in the past period, personal and work obligations. That's why I didn't have the chance to record any videos. I apologize from my followers. Uh, so uh, today will be like a quick recapture video. Uh, it will be a sort of short tutorial on a very simple topic, but hopefully it will be of benefit to uh, some of our colleague engineers. So uh, this topic will be uh, in short the conduit and trunking sizing in general and uh, specifically as per the DU regulations and standards. So I'll start immediately with this. It will be a brief session just to sort of uh, like catch up in the past period uh, that since we've been like uh, uh, busy doing other stuff so this will be just the beginning of uh, a, a new series of videos where we'll explain all these uh, topics to our fellow engineers uh, so the uh, trunking and conduit sizing is a very simple topic if you look at it uh, we will clear the conduits first of all so in a conduit this is an extract from the DIVA standard appendix 12 where it specifies the requirements for trunking and conduits I'll take it as a reference but uh, the concept is same for any other uh, area or any other like regulation but this is a standard which contains specific uh, figures and specific uh, tables which you can use as a reference in case you're working in Dubai or as per the DO standard so we'll clear the conduits first so to choose a conduit as you can see here you have uh, this is in mils so 20 uh, millimeters 25 millimeters and 32 millimeters please don't confuse this with millimeter square so this is 20 25 32 this is the conduit diameter so when you say 20 mils 20 millimeter diameter this is actually the diameter of the conduit when you say millimeter square which is for the cables it's the cross-sectional area so in that case the diameter will be different so when you say 16 millimeter square 25 millimeter square which we use to specify the cables and wires that represents the cross-sectional area of the conduit oh, oh i'm sorry of the cable which is pi r square so in conduit we specify the size as a diameter so you can see here that we have in this case, in DIVA case, 20, 25, and 32, we have the 50 as well. This is the range which we use to, uh, whenever we talk about conduits, we say 20, 25, 32, and 50 millimeters. Above that, usually, you'll be calling it a UPVC duct, which will be mainly used for underground cables or some other uses. So conduit usually represents the small sizes. So these are usually PVC or GI conduit, or there are other types also specific specialized types. So to to select a 20 millimeter conduit, you you wanna know what wires are you pulling through the conduit. So in this case, you can see the nominal cross section area of conductor. So as I said, this is the cross sectional area. So this is 1.5 or 2.5 millimeter square. This is diameter. The conduit size is in diameter and this one is the cross-sectional area. So uh, here in this case, for example, the 20 millimeter conduit, you'd be able to pull 2.5 millimeter square, five numbers, a maximum of five numbers of 2.5 millimeter square. And in case you're using four millimeter square, which is the nominal size for GPOs or power circuits, in that case, you'll be able to use three uh, to pull three numbers of four millimeter square so let's say i have a lighting circuit then i need to know I'll, I'll start by specifying 20 millimeter which is usually the conduit size which we use for lighting and for power circuits unless the number of uh, wires is exceeding whatever is here then 
in that case we need to use 25 millimeter now this topic is very simple and I, I know that many engineers this is like a piece of cake for them but you uh, you want to make sure that you know what wires you're pulling inside the conduit because you don't want a case where you specify the conduit in your shop drawing or in your design drawing and they cast the slab or whatever like area they use that conduit and you end up eventually pulling more wires either facing a difficulty where you can't pull the wire in the conduit because of because of exceeding this number or you face a case like where there's an inspection and the inspector highlights that you've exceeded the permissible maximum number of wires in a conduit and in that case it will be believe me it will be a big headache for you and a big like rework involving a lot of labor hours and a lot of abortive works just to replace that simple conduit which could have been prevented in case like you took a few minutes just to check the actual number of wires in each conduit or at least the conduits which you doubt that you might exceed where, where you see that there's an excessive number of wires in that conduit so I'll, I'll start by checking for example 2.5 mils which is the lighting wires I have five or less I'll go with 20 millimeter I have more than five like let's say up to nine I'll use 25 the same for power circuits in case I have four on three four four millimeters I have three wires which is like just from point to point where let's say live neutral and earth I'll go with 20 millimeters in case I have more than that like let's say I have a ring circuit where the wires like going and coming back or whatever case you have you want to go with 25 millimeters on a side note this is dependent on the project specification as well just a note for you from personal experience you want to check first the project specification some project specific project specs specify 25 mils for the uh, power circuits and maybe 20 mils for the lighting circuits so you want to make sure that you check the project specs the same goes for 32 millimeters usually 32 millimeters you want to use for the power mains going to the each apartment like in case it's an embedded uh, sort of single core wires you want to go with 32 millimeters where you check like I have 10 millimeters then okay how many numbers do I have do I have six okay I'll go with 32 16 millimeters for example do I have four okay I'll go with 32 you might have to go with a bigger size so this is in short the uh, conduit sizing it's pretty straightforward you have a table you check how many ways you have and you confirm that especially for it's tricky for lighting circuits we have where you have a lot of wires going back and forth and from the switch and like uh, looping point to point so you want to make sure that you choose the right conduit okay let's go now to the trunking sizing so trunking sizing in general uh, so I'll read it for you where single core insulated cables are installed in surface mounted metal or PVC trunking the space factor shall normally not exceed 40% okay so in this case it's 40% this is based on the British standards and in general the IEC standards usually this is the uh, well acceptable filling capacity of trunking what does this mean let's say that I have let's say that I have 100 uh, or let's start by 50 by 50 mm trunking okay now the sizes the trunking sizes are starting from 50 by 50 okay I'll, I'll con for simplicity I'll consider that it's a square size trunking of course you have 100 by 50 150 by 100 or like whatever like can be a rectangular shape for simplicity we'll consider it as a uh, square size square shaped trunking okay 100 by 100 150 by 
150 by 150. Okay, so as you can see, or as we've seen, the maximum filling capacity is 40%. So the max filling capacity is 40%, right? Okay, so this means that I need to know what is the square area of each trunking or the trunking that I'm planning to use. So for 50 by 50, how do I find the square area? It's length by, length by width, so 50 by 50. This means 2500 mm square. For 100 by 100, it is Ten thousand mm square, and for the one fifty by one fifty, it is this number. Okay, so this is the maximum. Uh, this is the uh, square area of this trunking. So what is forty percent of this? Forty percent of this so forty percent is point four into this and the same goes for the forty percent filling capacity. So okay. So this means that for a 50 by 50 millimeter trunking, the maximum space that I can occupy with my wires is 1000 mm square, which is 40%. I'll go back again just for the sake of uh, simplicity. So square area of the 50 by 50 mm trunking is 2500 millimeter square. 40% of this, which is the maximum acceptable filling capacity of the trunking as per the British standards and the DIWA standard, which is based off the British standards, is 1000 mm square. 4000 for the 100 by 100 and 9000 for the 150 by 150. Okay, so, so how do we make use of this? So, assuming that I have a... Assuming that I have a... Four millimeter. I'm using four millimeter square wires, single core wires. Now we're talking about wires. Okay, which is the wire size used for power circuits? Okay, for lighting, usually we want to use uh, two point five millimeter. Okay. So what's the cable diameter? So I go to any manufacturer or and like usual, the, the cable the diameter ranges are within, like, uh, they, they are very, like, close to each other. So you can use a reference data sheet for this of uh, the, the manufacturer which, which you're using uh, in your projects. Or you can check the actual data sheet of the, uh, the cable or wire you're using in your project. In this case... I'll assume that the cable diameter is 15 millimeters. Okay, so one core, four millimeters square. This, as we said, this is the cable cross section area. The diameter of this cable is 15 millimeters, uh, of course, which means like 1.5 centimeters. So, uh, how many how many cables do I have? Let's say I have 20. Or you know, I wanna I wanna go there other way around, like, what's the cross-section area? If you want to uh, check how many wires you put, you can put in a certain trunking, you put the cross-sectional area first, and then you divide the uh, permissible filling capacity by that cross-sectional area, you know how many wires you can put in that trunking. Or if you have a certain case where you are checking what's the trunking required for your requirement or you have a certain number of uh, wires then you can make it the other way around where you put here the 
quantity, cable quantity, and then what what is the total area it's occupying, and see if that or see what trunking is suitable for your wires. So in this case, the cross-sectional area of the cable, which is the uh, uh, formula for calculating a circle which is pi into r square okay Use 3.4 over 2. Okay, so this is the cross section area of a single cable. Now you want to see, or let's say, selected trunk size. For example, I want to use 50 by 50 millimeters okay so the maximum number of wires that I can put in this 50 by 50 is what equal to this 40 percent which is the maximum filling capacity divided by the cross-sectional area of a single wire Of course, this is a very uh, less number because I've put a big cable diameter. I believe the actual diameter of the single core formula wire is about 5 millimeters. Okay, which gives... Okay, so the actual, the approximate cable diameter of the one core four mils is 5 millimeters which means that I can put a maximum of 50 wires in the four, I can put a maximum number of 50 wires for millimeter square in a 50 by 50 trunk. So if I choose uh, to use a 100 by 100 trunk, so what do I do? I'll use this filling capacity, which is this. Then I can put 203 wires in a hundred by hundred trunk okay so I'm, to be honest I'm not sure about the cable diameter that I put here so this is the way that you do it uh, you need to put the actual cable diameter or the actual wire diameter that you're using and it will be a more realistic figures so that is in short, how you do the trunking sizing, the conduit sizing is straightforward. You have a table, you choose from that table. For the trunking filling, you, you calculate the uh, cross-sectional area of your cable. Then you uh, check the 40% uh, per maximum uh, filling capacity of your trunk, whatever size you choose to use. And you determine how many wires you can uh, fill in that trunking. That's for trunking. For, for cable tray and cable ladder, that's a different way where you have to use the actual cable diameters and check. The, 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 there's another way, maybe we can discuss it in another video because you need to actually uh, put list the cable diameters and check what spacing you're occupying there and make sure that you uh, leave a certain spare capacity dependent on the project to ensure that the cable tray can take the cable we'll leave that maybe for a, a different tutorial video thank you for watching and uh, hopefully this was uh, of any use uh, to you hopefully this will be useful for in your projects and uh, looking forward to uh, making new uh, videos and tutorials please like and subscribe and share the video to your uh, friends and appreciate your time for uh, watching this uh, tutorial video thank you see you soon